In this video, I'm going to show you how to get PS1 and PS2 BIOS files without the use of original consoles. So big shock to most anybody who watches my channel, I am a big fan of legal emulation, legal preservation, and backup of your games, BIOS files, and other such content. And it's fun to meet a bunch of other people out there who enjoy the same thing. Unfortunately, in the here and now, a lot of people who want to emulate PS2 or PS1 games don't still own the original consoles for which to rip BIOS files from, which are still required in most emulators. But as it turns out, Sony actually provides working PS2 and 1 BIOS files in their PS3 system updates, and the tools for which to extract them have become a lot easier to use. So in this video, I am hoping to show that off for all of you today, so that way you can continue on with your legal emulation desires, without having to own real PS1 and 2 hardware. But let's go ahead and dive in. Now before we get started, I want to send a big thank you over to Russ from Retro Game Core for making me aware of this option becoming a lot easier than it was in the past. And if you haven't checked out his channel yet, please do so. It's very awesome, covers a lot of emulation, tutorials, handhelds, and just a lot of good information for a wide variety of devices. But to extract your PS2 and 1 BIOS files from the PS3 firmware is actually a lot more straightforward than you'd think it'd be. The first thing we're going to need to do is download the PS BIOS Claim Tool by Anon, and this is available on archive.org, so the link will be in the description below. But once you're here, just go to the zip file and click on the little download icon. Next, we're going to need to download RPCS3. So this is a PlayStation 3 emulator, if you're not familiar with it. I have a whole setup guide on how to get it set up and all that, but for this tutorial in particular, we're just going to go over the initial firmware install process. But just go ahead and click on the download tab and download the latest version for Windows or Linux. This is available for both platforms. So for today's example, I'm going to be using Windows. Now our last required file is the PlayStation 3 system update. So as of this video, it's still at 4.89. So just click on download PS3 update. And if your internet browser throws up an error, that's fine. Just click on keep anyway. Now with everything downloaded, let's just get everything extracted. So RPCS3, this is in 7-zip format, so you will need to download 7-zip to get this one extracted if you haven't done so already. And then also the firmware BIOS claim tool needs to be extracted. This one's in zip format, so you should be able to use just about everything on it, but there we go. Now from here, go ahead and open up your RPCS3 folder and launch into the program. And then from here, just check mark I've read the quick start guide and do not show again, and then click continue. Now on the RPCS3 main menu here, just click on file and install firmware. And then navigate to where you have that PS3 update file stored and just double check it. And then when you get the successfully installed PS3 firmware and LLE modules, just click on OK and it will compile the PPU modules for the firmware. So just let it do its thing and bear with it as it does so. And once the compiling has finished, we are actually done with RPCS3. We don't need it anymore. It's done the job we needed it to. So just go ahead and exit out of this. But we still need its folder. So leave this one open. And now open up the firmware BIOS claim tool here. And again, this tool is available for Linux as well as Windows. Process should be the same for both. But again, for today's example, I'm using Windows. So for this one, we just need to grab the firmware BIOS claim.bat file and firmware underscore BIOS claim.ps1 file here and drag them into the RPCS3 folder. So that way they're in the same directory as the RPCS3 exe. And to get our BIOS files, all we need to do now is run the bat file. And if you get an error when you try to run it saying it's unsafe, just click the show more button and run anyway. And the process is relatively quick, and once it says press any key to continue, you now have your new PS1 and PS2 BIOS files. So inside the RPCS3 folder, you'll see four new files have been created. So the two that we are interested in are PS3 underscore PS1 underscore BIOS dot bin, and then PS3 underscore PS2 underscore emu underscore BIOS dot bin. These are our two new PS1 and PS2 BIOS files. Now by default, these are gonna be usable on a number of different emulators. So our PS2 BIOS is gonna be natively usable on PCSX2, on PC, Mac, Linux, AetherSX2 on Xbox or phones, XBSX2 on Xbox, 
So now just a quick example of using it on PCSX2. So I have my PCSX2 folder here. It's already all been set up and good to go. I've basically run everything from within this folder, but I'm just gonna add the new PS2 BIOS into the folder along with my other two BIOS files I ripped from my PS2 Fat and Slim in previous tutorials. But with that in place, I can now open up PCSX2, head into settings, BIOS file list here, Again, I already have PCSX2 defaulting to look for my BIOS files in this folder, and I can now see my new PS3 BIOS.bin folder right here. So if I select this, I can now use this BIOS file to play my PS2 games. Now, one thing to note about these BIOS files, they need to have fastboot enabled, otherwise they will not work. These BIOS files don't contain the original boot animations, so they will not work without fastboot enabled. But I have the BIOS file checked, so just a quick demo of it booting up. And there we go. Now as for our PS1 BIOS file, things with this one are going to be a bit different depending on if you're using a standalone emulator like DuckStation or if you are using RetroArch. So if you're using something like DuckStation, the process is gonna be exactly the same as you saw with PCSX2. You just add it to your preferred BIOS folder and then select it within the emulator and make sure fastboot is enabled. Now to use this BIOS file on something like Beetle PSX hardware, we're going to need to rename it to ps1 underscore rom dot bin and make sure that we have enabled Beetle PSX to the override BIOS function. So just a quick demo of that, I'm gonna rename this one ps1 underscore rom dot bin. There we go. Now I'm gonna open up my RetroArch folder here and add it to my RetroArch system folder. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to remove my normal BIOS files that I use here so that way we could give a proper demonstration. But anyway, I'm gonna load up into RetroArch, gonna select a PlayStation 1 game here real quick and tell it to run. And there we go, firmware is missing. That is what I expect to see on a first boot here. So if I go into my quick menu, core options, navigate down to emulation hacks and enable the override BIOS file hack here as was previously mentioned. And we are using a PS3 PS1 BIOS file. So that's the option that we're gonna select. Now again, this requires a content restart. So that's fine. We need to restart it anyway because it didn't load anything. And this time when I load up Ace Combat 2. We are greeted by the PlayStation boot up logo and our game loads as normal. Now the great thing about both of these BIOS files is they are region free so they should work with any regions PS2 and PS1 library. There may be exceptions to this of course, but this should be a pretty good option for anyone who has multiple regions worth of games. But that's gonna do it for this one. It is really awesome to see such an easier way to get working PS2 and PS1 BIOS files for use in emulation, especially for anyone else out there like me that likes to do it the legal way. It's a very simple process and the results are quite spectacular. But thank you so much as always for watching today's tutorial. I hope it helps you get your PS2 and PS1 emulation projects up and running to your desires. And do remember if you are interested in PS1 and 2 emulation setup guides, those are available on my channel as well. But here at the end, I do have a couple of huge favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way and I always love having you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keeping it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place going and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current backers. Thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. You're just super awesome. Thank you again for being our champions. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.